Hi everyone. Thanks for taking the time to participate this AWS Summit section. My name is Kervester. I'm the Solution Architect for Singapore Public Sector. And I have a privilege to have Henry with me, the Lead Product Manager from GovTech Singapore. Today, we are presenting Democratized Public Agency User Access to AIML on VAS. In the other world, putting machine learning closer to the video streams that we collect day to day. In this section, we will discuss when AI can help you, what are some of the stacks that your organization can use it to improve the safety of the people and communities, to increase the operational efficiency and drive greater innovations. Also, Henry will cover video analytics systems offering. VAS is a central platform built on AWS by video analytics team to quickly adopt you know, video analytics for all the public uh, agencies. He will share what use cases they have came across and how VAS can help you to lowering down the adoption barrier. Video analytics and machine learning went from being an aspirational technology to mainstream extremely fast. But what are the problem statements? They are close to 200 million enterprise IP cameras installed today. These cameras generate close to 1,000 petabytes of data a day. This volume is growing at 35% and will hit 3,500 petabytes by 2023. This data is a gold mine of information and business insight that need to be extracted. That's why we see video analytics growing, video analytics market growing rapidly to 13 billion by 2023. Despite all this rapid growth of video analytics market, only 2% of the video is ever analyzed by human and machine, leaving 98% of the recorded camera streams where no business intelligence has been extracted. The value of data remain untapped for most of the customers without tools to reason against the data. So as we do at Amazon, we work backward from what our customer needed and we ask ourselves, how could customers add computer vision to those existing cameras? One of the reasons why we believe so much on AIML at Amazon is because we use it ourselves and has been able to realize its benefit at skill. Machine learning is an integral part of Amazon. We have been applying machine learning in the areas such as personalization and supply chain for more than 20 years. Today, almost every department at Amazon has been touched by machine learning. At AWS, we are innovating on behalf of our customers to deliver the broadest and the deepest sets of machine learning capabilities for builders of all levels of expertise removing the undifferentiated heavy lifting so that our customer could move faster. At the macro level, we think about machine learning as having three layers of stacks. At the bottom layer are the frameworks, interfaces, and the infrastructure for expert machine learning practitioners. Today, 92% of the cloud-based TensorFlow and 91% of the cloud-based PyTorch run on AWS. New algorithms are being developed all across all the different frameworks and AWS has a dedicated team for all the major frameworks so that you have the right tools for the right jobs. But the fact is there aren't many machine learning practitioners in the market today, right? Expert machine learning practitioner. So if you want machine learning to be pervasive, you have to make it easier for everyday developers and data scientists. And that's why we have the middle layer stack for it. Amazon SageMaker provide data scientists to have the ability to build, train, and deploy machine learning model at scale. And Amazon SageMaker Canvas enable business analysts and domain experts to create their own model in the local platform without machine learning expertise. For example, the video analytics 
team from Regaftech is working closely with AWS to orchestrate the machine learning CI CD pipeline using Amazon SageMaker pipeline to manage the end to end machine learning workflow. Now, at the top of the stack, we serve developers and companies who want to add solution oriented intelligence to their application through an API call rather than you know, uh, developing and training the, their own model in Amazon SageMaker. And we have a lot of services in this area to address your needs, including the industry specific services. Let's talk through some of the example of the uh, video analytics under vision services, the Amazon recognition. With Amazon recognition, you can identify objects, people, text, activity, scenes in your image and videos, as well as inappropriate content without machine learning expertise. One of the key offerings for VAS, the conceptual analysis, is actually powered by Amazon recognition through our API services. Sounds cool, right? How do we start? So AWS has a number of training and acceleration program to help you get started your machine learning journey. We offer in-person training for both technical and business stakeholders, as well as a full free online course and training for your developers. We can conduct workshop to help you identify the best use cases, and we can work hand in hand with your team to develop a proof of concept under our Amazon uh, machine learning solution lab. Lastly, we have professional services and machine learning partner who can do end-to-end -end development and take your machine learning application to the production. Next, I'll pass the floor to Henry to share about success story of video analytics system. Thank you. Hello, hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Vanessa, for the introduction. Hi, I'm Henry Lim, um, a lead product manager for video analytics system from GovTech Singapore. I'm here today to share our journey on empowering public agencies with ease of access to AI on our video analytics system. As you know, in terms in the world of AI, in terms of structured data, that has been very well exploited by many agencies and well, many industries and organizations across the world. But with video analytics being unstructured data, it's a little bit harder to tap on. It tends to require more customized pipelines. In today's world, we see imaging technology improving in leaps and bounds. With better imaging technology comes higher re resolution sensors, high quality, high image quality video, and various new techniques of deriving bigger and better images. And with this comes larger and larger data volumes. With that, agencies are generating more volume of video and image data um, in leaps and bounds. And also this is with the industry's uh, manufacturing volume and the rich ecosystem of vendors. This has also reduced the cost of technology leading to the ubiquity of video sensors used in many areas of operations in different scenarios, such as TCC TVs, as well as camera-enabled devices that are utilized in operations by public agencies. With all of these, the aggregate uh, scenario from all this, it's an overall increase in data streams that agencies can tap upon and have to tap upon in order to, to provide more efficient operations. And of course, with this comes higher expectations from monitoring operations. With large volumes of data, there's, there comes the need to be able to, um, to derive greater insights. And uh, there's a, also increased expectations in how they are derived as well. With large data volumes, of course, common problems are starting to surface. Processing will increasingly take more resource and time. Imagine hours and hours of footage being sifted through Having to do that manually is not necessarily um, well. It's, it's not necessarily feasible. Traditional review like this is really manpower intensive and does not really scale with greater coverage. This and also data processing typically also requires custom approaches according to different types of use cases. There are diverse nature of data with different fields of view, subjects of interest, require special attention and determination of different processing methods and approaches. 
a key summary of all of this is that much of the data that's being collected is really not being processed, as Clavester mentioned earlier. However, it's not cost efficient to store massive amounts of raw video data. Data protection, compliance requirements, as well as need to provide for ease of retrieval for later analysis is important and also costly, of course. Echoing the observations of industry, much of this data, hence, is currently not being utilized efficiently for insights that really could be beneficial for, towards operations. However, you can see there's really a rich and strong potential for processing of video in order to, <clears throat> in order to improve on our current operations. Across agencies, we observe there's a strong demand for video analytics focused around three core areas. Firstly, enabling 100% attention for repetitive tasks. As mentioned earlier, it's labor intensive to repetitively scan and process events operations across large volumes of data. Being able to ensure attention spans for, for such repetitive tasks by automating the tracking of spatial or temporal parameters is important in order to provide better notification and better context around e observed events. There's also a need to tap into the potential of analytics in order to offer better con uh, customer experiences, such as in the, when uh, image data is actually being submitted for different types of applications. Image analytics can help provide more user, be be more user feedback to guide user behavior, as well as improve service delivery, such as perhaps in the submission of biometric photo applications. In areas where human expertise may be scarce, such as identification of microorganisms, um, like rare species or, or different types of animals across, um, by in, in terms of uh, in operations, there's a need to provide assistance as well in order to scale this expertise so that wider coverage can be achieved. By codifying actions into um, repeatable processes using video analytics, we can also ensure repeatability of these operations as well as consistent accuracy. With all of these potential benefits, however, there are adoption challenges to be faced. With disparate pipelines uh, having to be brought together, there are scalable problems essentially. Firstly, there's a need for custom VA development, as I mentioned earlier. Agency-specific use cases require different approaches, and that requires us to experiment, to prototype, and then figure out how does that fit into deployment. However, across public agencies, we do not always have in-house knowledge or expertise for AI development. Within agencies, the, a lot of operators are the subject matters, uh, subject matter experts for such use case development, however. And there's advantage in being able to leverage ability from these personnel in order to execute end-to-end -end development. But in most cases, they may not have coding expertise. There's also no simple mechanism to utilize VA capability, capabilities that are currently available in-house or throughout the industry. It, in the sense that there's time consuming to deploy and also build new solutions that um, across different agencies who may be calling different separate tenders as well. There's also a lack of an operational deployment platform for models that have been, that have been prototyped and created in order for them to be leveraged and bridged across different uh, systems for integration. There's a need to support scalability and uh, robustness when we actually integrate into agency systems. So before I go further, uh, let's talk a little bit about my team. So I'm from the data science AI division uh, from the video anal analytics team. And together we, base we form part of the data uh, capa capability center for AI in the whole of government. The team aims to widen the option of AI technologies in order to drive practical applications across public agencies. And to do that, we actually take several approaches. Firstly, my team works with agencies for AI model experimentation and solution development. Particularly for custom use cases, the team works with agencies to look at the particular problem sets and develop non-commercial off-the-shelf VA solutions to address uh, specialized problems. By customizing training, 
different types of AI, AI models to address use cases, we help agencies realize the potential of video analytics. By working with agencies, there may come a time where industry applications are also available. We work across agencies as well as industry partners for eventual deployment of these technologies in the operational spaces. Where industry solutions are uh, available for agencies to deploy as well, agencies may need to consider between multiple, um, multiple um, solutions. Our team also um, provides services to test and benchmark different types of solutions in a set, um, and establish approaches for comparison in order to validate and benchmark these solutions for their use. By supporting proof of concepts, we help agencies to move from prototyping and convert them to deployment scenarios as well. Of course, we are looking at the whole of government as a whole, as a large organization. It's very hard to galvanize the, util the utilization of AI across, um, across uh, uh, the whole of the organization. One key way is actually to develop and operate platforms as well that provide deep learning capabilities in order for different agencies to come together, share the knowledge and expertise, and actually drive AI forward in terms of utilization. At the same time, there's a need one of the core principles in, in the utilization of AI is availability of data as well as uh, in, in order for insights to be tapped upon. We also develop and drive metadata standards across the whole of government, and we hope to achieve synergy across different public agencies in order to bring data sets together and actually achieve um, greater AI adoption. Across the whole of public service, we see agencies at different levels of VA maturity. We aspire to help agencies as they move, uh, as they mature in the usage of AI across the space as well. Um, within that, we see several, several influences in terms of maturity, maturity factors. Firstly, in terms of video analytics, within agencies, as I mentioned, there may not be a lot of in-house expertise for video analytics, which is one area that we aim to improve. Again, at the same time, data availability across different teams, even within agencies, may be difficult to bridge. And there's, um, there's a need to understand the data that's available and where it can be utilized and operated. Lastly, in terms of technical propensity, agencies also differ in terms of resources and investments that they can put into the utilization of AI or, or video analytics as well. So we see kind of a, pyramid, uh, a, a sliding scale of agencies on the left-hand side moving from nascent into mature agencies on the right. National agencies are at a stage where they are looking at consultancy, they are assessing data sources, they are assessing the viability of data sources, and even potentially even the feasibility of video analytics for their solutions. Hence, our team comes in and actually helps in terms of by providing consultancy spaces. In the middle, we see a lot of agencies essentially uh, starting to move into video analytics where a core need is really prototyping and operational study. This is where we see a quite a majority of agencies as we are engaging with them over the past years and she's starting to move them towards modern iteration, iteration and testing this allows agencies to co-develop new data workflows and concepts of how VA data analytics can be utilized in operations. Towards the right, even with mature agencies in video analytics, they may have ready to scale uh, scaled up video analytics uh, implementations. However, there's still a need to develop common integration standards and the ability to share metadata across different, uh, different agencies in order to reach no, uh, scalability in terms of like uh, efficient ops across the whole of government. Hence, we see across all agencies, there are opportunities for us to really leverage and push the use of video analytics to the next level. We see that across one, uh, in terms of one key opportunity really is to operationalize this usage and, and falling on, uh, and this, uh, in order to realize the benefits. Most of these cases tend to fall into three approaches. Firstly, there's post-mortem analysis. There's a need for extraction of insights for trend analysis in many cases. Uh, there's data, 
you, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, video is really unstructured data. You may glean many different types of insights from it. Certain agencies may be looking at people counting, other agencies look at trends, patterns, or other elements that, we, that they may be available within this uh, similar sets of data as well. There's a need to provide easy ways of extracting this information that allows agencies to then take that and further process it into actual trends and insights that can be beneficial uh, in, in, the, in the process of data-driven decision-making. Another, another usage of video analytics is really real-time image analytics. This is a lightweight implementation for operational usage, requiring less data, and we see that as a one beneficial way of really uh, engaging video analytics in the day-to-day -day operations of different agencies. As these does not require full video streams, there is also reduced data load and complexity. Lastly, of course, the heavy heavy duty usage of video analytics requires uh, real time video an analysis. This is the process of running VA models on video streams from directly from video sensors, providing real time data that requires temporal attributes. Of course, this will be more of the heavy weight lifters of the video analytics space for use cases that require things like gate analysis or anomaly detection in real time. Implementation complexity in this case is high. Of course, many agencies are just starting to move into that. But we don't see that as a very major key driver of implementation yet. And actually, we, uh, two of the cases that we, um, we have focused on really driving is um, the, first, uh, the first two examples that I showed, post-mortem analysis and real-time image analysis, which we see drive covering potentially 90% of known agencies' use cases. Across our engagement with, um, with uh, different public agencies, we have seen many different diverse examples of VA use cases, some of which are shown here. So firstly, one example of an of a operational use case that has been implemented is actually safe dislike parks. Of course, during the COVID timeframes, there's a need to understand the distribution of crowd levels across our public spaces. There was an, um, <clears throat> The, in, in terms of operations, it was a very manual process to, have, to initially understand and actually count the number of people in different public spaces in order to establish uh, situational awareness. However, it was found with, public, with camera sensor deployments already in place that the information could be tapped upon in order to automate these people counting and, and actually supply live information onto a website which can directly inform the public on which are the crowded spaces to avoid. Next is Project Pensive. This is a very different use case, looking at the detection of early dementia and cognitive impairment. With the use of image analytics, we are able to train models that codify certain experts, um, expert behavior in order to identify these cases. Of course, as you know, Singapore has an aging population. Potentially, applications like this improve the customer experience between our healthcare professionals and our members of public that can help to, <clears throat> to perform early diagnosis and, of course, seek early treatment for those elderly that might be involved. Another use case is a most detection of mosquito larvae. This was a very uh, interesting project in the sense that um, with the, using AI to help entomologists identify um, most dengue causing mosquito larvae species it was a very difficult use case. As you can see from the images, there are many, many similarities between different types of mosquito larvae species. With minute differences in this, it, was, uh, it takes a lot of time, like several hours or days, for even scientists to identify between different larvae species. And of course, by sampling um, the presence of larvae across Singapore, we can better launch preemptive measures, intervention measures for dengue control. There is a need for things like AI to come into this, to come into this space and actually help make the process more efficient. Lastly, we have Project Crabite. This is also another interesting project where the counting of microorganisms helps to ascertain the quality of water and fish feed in large-scale fish hatchery uh, productions. The the, in, the, in the original workflow, this process was very manual, and you can tell from the images, very manual in the process and time-consuming. 
with v with AI, we can actually shorten this this time uh, the the time space of such detection, and with that, improve the workflows uh, for such hatchery operations. With such diverse use cases, we see therefore there's really a need to be able to tap into the different types of use cases and data sets across the whole of government and galvanize our approach towards video analytics in order to really put. Uh, to put it into operational usage across our public services. So what is VAS? Um, I'll show you a little video and hope you, uh, to give you a little glimpse of how VAS works. Right. I hope <coughs> the images will <coughs> give, kind of give you an idea of how VS works in, in, in real life. To sum it up, really, VS is a platform that, that we envision will lower the adoption barrier to video analytics for government agencies. It is a central platform that's built on AWS cloud services that provides a one-stop shop for capabilities that enable uh, different agencies to tap on different government use cases. Under the hood, VS consists of three main components. Firstly, with insights, we, we provide a fully supported deployment environment to facilitate agencies' use of existing VA capabilities, be in-house developed ones, as well as um, those available for industry. By providing an easy-to-use interface for report generation, the, the insights component basically allows agencies to easily start tapping on video analytics for report uh, for, for report generation and establish trend analysis, and <clears throat> this, uh, such as for post mortem study. So, various, and, um, various agencies have come online and actually utilize uh, the insights component for different types of studies on uh, pedestrian behavior as well as other types of uh, users. As you can see on insights, we have already uh, we have already deployed existing in-house deployed uh, in-house trained models. They are actually relevant to multiple agencies' use cases. Next, on video I/O, we also provide a, a user-friendly no-code interface to facilitate agencies' uh, easy exploration into video analytics. This provides for more agile experimentation and helps agencies to really better define different use cases to arrive at better outcomes. Agencies can come on to video I.O., curate their own data sets, and actually launch model training very easily and compare between, between different model iterations. Of course, successful model prototypes can then be launched into insights for report generation in future. Lastly, we have Cloud Video Exchange an upcoming component that is to be integrated into the VS ecosystem. This will eventually provide a central exchange platform for video streams and metadata across different public sector agencies. This allows us to have a whole compliant architecture and standardized protocols for the exchange of, of uh, data streams across the whole of government, and such that it can also feed into the video analytics system for di different types of analytics as well. With VAS, we really target uh, different types of personas for agencies. Firstly, ops managers who need to have on-demand uh, access to different types of insights um, from, uh, video, from video streams can tap on different components of VAS for this, uh, for this usage. Next, with policy planners as well, they can, actually they can actually start to look at insights from video streams and actually utilize it within their decision-making and planning processes. For technically inclined users who are actually interested in developing new models, exploring new different types of data use cases, they can actually use the system as well to curate annotate data sets and actually train individual models that to address um, agencies' very specific problem sets. And they can do so without having coding expertise and, uh, and actually very, with an easy, simple, uh, user-friendly interface. With that, within the agency teams, 
having a common platform also allows in easy interaction between different members of uh, different members of the team. Of course, relevant information from ops users can be shared with policy or technical users to drive insights discovery as well as uh, the discovery of new VA capabilities. New models can also be developed by te technical users and in time be published on the system allowing ops and policy users to derive new insights and establish new findings into their decision-making processes. Hence, VAS tends to, uh, is aimed to develop, deliver on three core value propositions addressing the different barriers to ad adoption for video analytics that we see from agencies. Firstly, we allow access to existing VA capabilities so VA, uh, with, with uh, our in-house developed media models, public service agencies with similar needs can already start to tap on a variety of capabilities with little barrier. Across multiple agencies, you can already start utilizing our, load, our already av available capabilities on VAS to start performing analysis and extract information for insights. There's also the ability to label data and train custom VA models. As mentioned earlier on, many agencies will have custom use cases that needs to be explored. With VAS, we also have a secure operational model develop, uh, deployment solution for all agencies with VA models that have been prototyped and need, then needs to be integrated into agency systems. They need not, they need not have to build a separate system. They can actually they, they can leverage on VAS for model deployment and use that for integration into agency systems. Hence, together, the components of VAS provides an end-to-end -end pipeline for video analytics. As agencies are able to explore and iterate towards better understanding of use cases and data, by gathering data together and, and performing scoping and discovery of different types of implementations, agencies can, well, we can mature in our approach towards video analytics and take a um, and take a foundational framework and supporting tools to better serve both the training and deployment process and arrive at a stage where solutions can be easily be put into use for more efficient operations. So a little bit about the tech stack. VS is of course not possible without building on a rich tech stack uh, that uh, supplied by um, our AWS. Many of the cloud services on AWS has made it much easier to implement a comprehensive and robust solution at scale on the cloud. Several services sitting behind our insights engines or video IO engines allow a managed, de managed deployment pipeline of the different types of video analytics models that we aim to train and, as, and also has trained. And with flexibility front-end interfa interfaces, we are able to provide a very easy to use platform that, is, that can continue to expand in terms of delivery of services across multiple agencies. To take the view of platform ecosystem, we see multiple producers of data and capabilities that can yield meaningful results at scale. Agencies as consumers need this ability to be able to discover and leverage different services and capabilities to produce insights that can help in, in providing synergies to different sets of values and benefits for different segments of users. Of course, VAS is really part of a critical part of our, our data science AI's portfolio to scale VA adoption across agencies. At many different levels, we provide metadata standards, a standard set of um, uh, sharing of industry knowledge via a, a VA playbook, as well as te technical consultancy leading up to utilization of VAS. The data science AI team continues to try and uh, to drive and push adoption of AI across public agencies, and we hope agencies can really tap into this resource. VS can play a role really to facilitate better understanding of key problem statements in agencies' usage of AI as well, by better helping agent, agency users bet, uh, define their problem statements with uh, data insights derived from VAS. We can, con we can better um, kind of prioritize the quick wins as well as the major projects in order to better realize the benefits that such a video analytics AI can bring in the agency space. So let's get started. I mean, what's the next steps? So one, one advice we take is really start small and plan with the end in mind with three key steps. 
Firstly, I think we have to begin with an end game in mind when we actually approach AI and, and, and especially particularly video analytics. There's a need to establish a clear problem statement, be it by better understanding observations around the problem sets and as well as iterating and finding uh, and experimentation. With observations on the ground, uh, these uh, observations can be tested out and actually uh, and a clearer problem set established. Next is to really start small. Sometimes we have grand visions of what video analytics can do, but a key point of it is really we have to break down the problem set into small problem statements. That, that is also, that, there's also a need to co correlate that with existing data sets and understanding of what data sets can do and build, and based on that, build minimum value products that helps us take you know, single step, singular steps towards the end game in mind. And of course, lastly, leverage platforms and um, capability centers as well. By using the whole of government video analytics system, we can continue to drive innovation and the discovery, uh, the discovery towards video analytics usage forward. And, if it, and realize efficiency gains that can be derived from uh, the use of video analytics. And with that, uh, I'll end my presentation. Yep, I'll hand back to Clevester for the next segment. Hello, hello. Okay, all right. Thanks, thanks, uh, Henry, for the excellent share. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so much for, you know, uh, stay with us. So uh, just now I shared about, you know, we have a free digital courses, more, more than 500 of it. You can leverage our skill builder, AWS skill builder, to build problem uh, solving skills and, you know, prepare for your AWS certification exam. And with uh, AWS certification, you can actually help you to validate your professional skill set and highlight, you know, your on-demand skill set, this kind of stuff. Please uh, scan the QR to learn more, okay? And then, done. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, participate in our section. The key takeaway for this section is, you know, our three layer of machine learning stack. How you can help VAS to go to market quickly with a secure, high performing, resilience and efficient infrastructure. And Henry shared about the adoption barrier faced by public sector agency on the video analytics, right? So value proposition of the VAS, how the end-to-end -end pipeline towards to the different use cases, and most importantly, VAS as, as a platform to drive the adoption, and how you will tap the rich capabilities of the uh, AWS AI ML services for upcoming features. Okay, so we will open up the floor for a quick uh, Q&A. Is there any question? Okay. Oh, no question. Okay, I have question. <laughs> so, Henry, can you share with us, you know, how many agencies so far have already onboarded to your VAS at the moment? Well, hello. Yeah, well, we have we have close to ten. Uh, we've we have over ten agencies who have been actively utilizing uh, VAS at different points of of uh, development scale. Um, they have no and embarked on different types of prototyping projects, such as like detection of uh, rodents or drain hole covers. And of course, we are looking at more and more use cases uh, coming on board, uh, different agencies coming to trial the system and, and help us improve as well. This uh, ecosystem platform sounds like a very cool project. And could you share with us what is the upcoming roadmap for your product release? What is it on your pipeline and what we can expect in the future? Sure. As I mentioned earlier on, VX is an expanding platform. We are continuing to incorporate new capabilities into it. And, uh, um, we are look, and of course, we are looking at different types of collaboration with industry as well to expand on the different capabilities or video analytics capabilities that agency can tap on across this platform, such as, um, con con as you mentioned, we are looking to con further expanding our contextual analysis capabilities, as well as other types of object detection track, uh, and uh, object tracking types of capabilities on nice. system as well. Um, off the bat as well, uh, we are looking at um, one of the key principles that we're looking at going, moving forward as well is also the concept of ML op operations. As we continue to um, onboard different types of models on the system, there's also a need for a standardized approach to how we can ensure that our model performance remains uh, constant. Uh, I think that's one of the, one, one of the big problems that's uh, faced right across the industry at the moment as well. So that's one of the directions that we are 
definitely planning to take the platform in. Nice. Thank you so much for your excellent sharing. So uh, thank you so much again, you know, for participating in our section. We appreciate your feedbacks. Please scan the QR code on this, uh, you know, Android and iOS and give us a valuable feedback so that we can improve in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>